In this video, I'm going to attempt to recreate a limited edition Hamburglar toy from the adult Happy Meal with an alternative pose as well. I'll start by doing some rough modeling chit chat before buckling down to do some detail work. I'll pop back in a bit to talk about the sculpting process I'll be using for the hair and then I'll finish it up. Next is the 3D printing time lapse. After that, there will be a lot of support, so Put on your headphones and enjoy that tingle during the ASMR section. And then we'll see how I did. So let's get into it. Hey everybody, doing a little something different. Well, different in that it's not different. But uh, today I'm returning to the, the McDonald's limited edition set of toys. And today what I'm doing is I'm doing the heart one, which I guess is kind of different for me. Usually whenever I have a project like this, I will, uh, I'll do the easy one first. I, I like to do the easy stuff first. And then, you know, by the time I'm done with the easy stuff, I'm kind of done with the whole project. <laughs> but no, today, today I'm starting with the hard one. I'm starting with the Hamburglar. And the Hamburglar is difficult for, oh, a number of reasons. Uh, the biggest one being that we have to do some sculpting on the back of the head. Now you might've noticed when I started here that the head, I started with a cube and then I subdivision surfaced it. And then, oh, sorry, squeaky chair. And then I um, applied that subdivision surface. And I, I like that because it makes this mesh that I can, I can work a little bit more with, but it's still very cube-like in its orientation. It's very comprehensible and, and easy to wrap your head around what you're doing and, and what's going on. And so I like, I like doing things that way when I do, um, uh, you know, when I do this sort of project, but Ooh, <laughs> that's way too far out. But, you know, that's my personal preference. What have we got this on? That's median point. That's the way it should be. All right. Now I need to, uh, there we go. Sharpen those edges. In fact, you know what? I need to sharpen these edges too. because I need to add another loop cut here because those are legs. But I do think that I need to sharpen these up just to kind of make the top of it flat. Okay, I'm just doing some basic blocking right now. I'm really not worried about the final shape of things, not yet. And if, if I'm going off model, if I'm not doing it right, I'm not worried about that yet. I will clean it up later, but the trick to the trick to working quickly is you start with just the highest level, dirtiest modeling you can, and then you clean it up later. So that's what we're doing here. We're, we're doing it as dirty as we can, and then we'll clean it up later. We're doing it dirty. All right, there we go. I like how that works. Now, rotate this foot out. Now I do have to admit, you know, sometimes whenever I'm working, whoops, <laughs> I do little mistakes and some people, they, they want to hide those mistakes. They want to kind of sell you on the idea that they're doing it perfectly. But I like to leave those little mistakes in because I want to show you that, you know, not everybody does things right the first time. In fact, nobody does it right the first time. Although I will admit, I did model this once before already. I've been practicing a little bit. I do want to, I do want to do this well, but at the same time, I want you to know that I don't get it perfect. I don't always know what I'm doing. Uh, I sometimes have to, I sometimes have to try things two or three times, just like everybody. Well, at this point, oh, we need to get the hands in here and we need to get the hair in here. I think for the hair, I'm just gonna, in fact, we should start naming things head body, legs and feet. And that way, when I duplicate the head and move it back here for the hair, 
I'm not confused as to which one's which. <laughs> All right, let's just scale that out just a little bit. Oh, I need to put some ears on him too. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not worried about the top of the head because the top of his head is going to be covered with a hat, which I will have to make here in just one second. I should mirror this, but no, I'm going to leave this unmirrored for now. In fact, let's get that head going on. And I'm just going to start with another cube for the head. I always like to start with cubes. I don't know why, but I do. All right. Sharpen that up, scale it out, and uh, let's smooth that hat out. I think I need to sharpen that up as well. And I think I need to sharpen this up, but like, oops, just by half. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> there we go, much better. I will, uh, I will play with the overall shape of this and make sure that it's right in just a minute. Uh, let's get those ears on. Do we want to do a cube for the, sure, cube for, everything's a cube. <laughs> Everything starts as a cube. All right, let's get that in place and let's just do some quick shaping. Uh, I think we need to make the ears thinner. I want to rotate them, but I'm going to rotate them when I'm done. It's easier. It's always easier to work with a shape. And I'm just going to use the knife tool and cut out the shape of the ears, but it's always easier to work with it straight oriented and then fix it afterwards. You know what I mean? Uh, ooh, why did you do that? Why'd you add that edge, Derek? Can we dissolve that edge? Yeah, okay, good. And now, I want to clean this up, but for now, we're just going to rough block it. Oop, I missed one. Important one. All right, let's smooth that out. Make sure that's... Oh, and let's add a mirror to it. We are almost done with the rough blocking. I still need to do the face, I suppose, and the hands. But I wanted to point out that I did bring in some reference images this time. And we have to go to uh, Material Preview to be able to see them. But we have some reference images here. And I brought these in as plain so that they're in here so that I can just kind of work with them as I'm working so I can see them from both sides. And I'll be using these when I get to printing it up. But for right now, I'm just going to add a really quick cube mesh for the hands. Ah, did I forget to name the hat? All right. Now I will, I will mention this. If we look at the reference images, these hands, I'm pretty sure these hands are on upside down. <laughs> What's up with that? That's all right. We don't, uh, we don't begrudge him that. He wants to have weird upside down hands. That's fine. Though I am going to do pretty much exactly the same thing I did last time. I'm going to make a, a version that's a little bit more traditional. That's a little bit more, uh, looks like the old versions. And when I do that, I may flip the hands around. I don't know yet. You know, we, we, we think about these things now and then we figure them out later. Cause the thumbs, I think, I think this is where they're putting the thumbs. I think the thumbs are below and thumbs don't go below. That is not where thumbs go. But again, these, these toys are designed to be kind of weird. They kind of embrace the weird and you know, in that way, I kind of like them. Now, before I jump into fixing these up and, and making it look exactly like, like the reference images, I am going to do something real quick. 
I'm going to take all of these models before I subdivision surface it. And I'm going to do that displace trick that I did in the last time. The one where I, I added a wiggle to it, a little bit of warble to it. I took that term from Ian Hubert. But I'm going to do the warble before the subdivision surface. So basically, I'm going to be doing warbling on the big mesh here. And the idea is that it's going to break the symmetry of it. And you can already see that just a little bit. Let me turn that up to like five. So it's obvious what we're doing here. So without the warble, it's straight, but with the warble, it's just kind of a little bit irregular, but we're going to do that nice and nice and quiet like instead that way. And then we're going to do the warble after the subdivision surface as well. Uh, but I may have to make a different warble for that one, but that's going to be the idea. Well, at this point I need to put, I need to put the face, I need to put the eyes, all four eyes on there and I need to put the mask. But at this point I want to, I want to start bringing it in line with the, uh, with the reference image. So I'm going to do that. And that may take me a little while. This is, this is the time when I just put on a little bit of, of classical music and just kind of, you know, chill out and and get to work and so i think that's what i'm going to do yeah i messed this up big time i need to move things around a lot so i'll meet you on the other side as soon as i'm done with all of that i'll see you then All right, time to jump back in. Now, for some reason, as I've been working on this, the subdivision surface modifiers do not want to work. Like, take a look at the feet. Subdivision surface is on, but it's not smooth. And I think that's the warbles. I think the warbles are, for some reason, making that not want to work. But that's okay. I can work with that. I can make it work. <laughs> Sometimes it's about... It's not about uh, what you do. It's about how badly you want it to do it. Now, this is the part that I have been waiting for. I'm going to go ahead and hide those references. Actually, I'm going to bring back the reference images because the back of his head, do you see this? Let's take a look at this. How in the world am I going to model this? Now, I've been playing with a couple of different ideas for this, but what I think I'm going to do is I'm just going to sculpt it. I'm just going to do some sculpting. Uh, I think that that hat might need to be adjusted a little bit. We got some work to do. We're not done. I'm just going to hide the hat for now. But first thing to do to sculpt is we apply all the modifiers. Then we go into sculpt mode. Sculpt mode. And what tool are we going to use for this? Now, let me make sure. Let me go back out of sculpt mode and make sure that our scales have been applied and everything. Nope, they have not. All right, now they have. That can sometimes mess things up. Also, we're going to turn on dynamic topology. 
and we're going to bring the detail size down just a little bit and I'm going to grab my reference images here and move them down just a little bit all right let's see if we can do this so the tool that I found like I said I, I, I did practice just a little bit but the tool that I found is to inflate oops let's turn dynamic topology back on okay is to inflate and then move it up actually before I do this I'm gonna grab the clay strips and I just want to like define the shape here real fast so I want to define that it's going down like this it's coming out oops like that just kind of some general whoosh whoosh it's kind of some general shapes of it so that as I'm working I kind of have some guidelines for it all right Is that kind of the general idea all right so now I'm gonna start at the bottom here and I'm going to just inflate and maybe I'll smooth it out first inflate this up just a little bit and if I feel I need a little more I can crease it but I don't think I'm gonna need more down here at the bottom I may need some more though as I go up Are these too big or too small ah, they're about right they're about right so this is all I'm gonna be doing inflating and then smoothing it across the inflate and smoothing that out just a little bit I think the inflate tool yeah the inflate tool is is my tool for this job so that's what we're gonna be doing jumping in doing some sculpting inflating and you know sculpting <laughs> sculpting is another time where you just kind of turn on some classical music or you know some quiet uh, YouTube videos that you've been meaning to watch for a little while and you just kind of just kind of let your body work so I'm gonna go back to that turn on some music and let's let's enjoy the joy of just kind of sculpting and playing with this and giving this some time I'll catch you guys on the other side right well I think I am just about done with this one I don't think it's perfect but I do think that imperfection is kind of you know part of this particular look and style so in that sense I nailed it <laughs> but I do think that it's ready to be boolean together and prepared for 3d printing let's get that thrown at the 3d printer and see how it comes out
You might have noticed that I've got a couple of different prints here, including one that I printed. I wanted to know if this pose that I came up with would print with minimal supports. I tried to print it without supports whatsoever. That's what this tiny print was. It was an attempt to print it without supports to see where supports were really necessary. And I found that they were really necessary around the hat, even though I tried to make it so that it would slope up. There just wasn't enough of a slope there. So I printed this full size version with supports under the front and the back of the hat and none on the sides. And it turned out okay, but I think it could have done better. But this was all just gathering information. Then there were the final prints. And of course there is the weird version. Now, again, I kind of dig the idea behind these weird uh, toys and the, the message behind them that even if you're weird, you can still be loved and welcome. And I dig that. But I only had four colors to work with. So instead of having a flesh tone, he had to be the same skin tone yellow as the band of his hat and underneath here. And instead of having a green tie, I had to give him a red tie. But overall, I liked the design of this. And I will say that I had to go back and redesign it for the half size print because the logo on the tie didn't come through before. But then there is the action pose that I created that hopefully would print with less supports. And I, I think it did. I think it proved that it would. But this pose also has a more traditional face. I still got a little bit of cleanup to do around the eyes there. There we go. I think the hair turned out spectacular. I kind of dig the, the cape the way that it is. And I was able to take advantage of the multicolor print process to put color on the inside of the cape. And then I also did change the tie so that it would be spots instead of a logo. This is, this is kind of a hybrid between the weird and the original traditional. I wanted to go full hog and just re-sculpt the face and give them all those little like cabbage patch details of the original face. But I decided to keep it kind of halfway in between. Now the differences between the half size print and the full size print were that the half size print was printed using what's called a uh, tree like support. Somebody recommended I give those a shot. So I did. And uh, they're interesting. I'm not sure if they're better or worse, but they were definitely interesting. I, I can't say that they tore off any cleaner than regular supports or left behind less. I don't know. I'm going to take a good look at these and see what I think. But all of these files and the other variations. So we'll have the sneaky pose with the weird face and we'll have the traditional weird pose with the traditional face will all be available if you wanted to print your own. But there we go. I hope that you have enjoyed this. I hope that this has been a lot of fun. And uh, you know, there are a couple more toys in this series. So if you want me to do them, be sure to let me know in the comments that you're enjoying this and that you enjoy this series. And if you have any other, you know, I'm thinking it would be fun to model toys from my childhood that I just never got a chance to get. But if you've got some cool ideas of things that might be fun and easy to model, I'd love to hear them in the comments. But until I see you again, remember you are a child of God, you're special, and thank you so much for watching. That is a big pile of supports there. Oof. <laughs>